Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, it's gonna be a little bit different than what I usually do. We're gonna check out the Republic of Gamers Rapture GT-AX1-1000. This Wi-Fi router and switch combo is more geared towards gamers, but I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up as well as all the functionality that it has. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at mactelecomnetworks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon store and I'll put it in the description below. So the first thing we'll do, we'll get this unboxed and then we'll go through some of the specs. Here we have the box for the Rapture GT-X1-1000 and let's get this opened up. So we'll pull up the top. And inside we have a bunch of different pamphlets just going over some, I think it's a quick startup guide of how to do it. Same with on the back, but it's in a different language. We have advanced Wi-Fi helper tip and we may use this, uh, we'll see. And then we just have some more verbiage on this other piece of paper. Now let's get this router opened. It comes in this nice plastic packaging. We'll pull it up. And that is a beefy, beefy router. It's pretty heavy too. It's, I would think about uh, six or seven pounds. On the front, we have the ASUS Republic of Gaber symbol. Um, and it looks like it has this plastic tearaway on it. So we'll go ahead and take that off. On the sides here, you can see these little uh, pointy things. That's where we're gonna be attaching all of our antennas onto. On the back, we have our USB 3.0 ports. Beside that, we have our 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Uh, we have another blue port, not too sure what that is, but we'll look into that after. And then we just have our four ethernet ports. And we also have a reset button. And here, this is where we will be plugging in our power. And this is a power on and off. On the side, we have some other buttons. This is Wi-Fi, so it's a push button. This is WPS that makes it easy to connect your devices to. And then we have a, I think it's a Wi-Fi boost button. Then on the front, we have some status light indicators. The first one's your power indicator. Then we have your 2.4 and your five gigahertz band. And then the middle one, still not sure what that is, but then we have our LAN port light, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and then we have our WPS. So we'll take out this big piece of cardboard. And underneath, we have all of our antennas. So let's go ahead and put those on. In total, we have eight antennas. So I'm gonna take these out of the packaging and then put it onto our ASUS router. All right, so now all the antennas are out of the packaging. Let's go ahead and put one on. Just need to put it on and then turn to the right. Make sure it's tight and then we could turn it, which we're gonna have going up for all of our eight antennas. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the other seven on. All right, now we have all eight of our antennas on and this thing looks like a beast. I can't wait to see how it performs. Let's see what else comes in the box. I'm pretty sure it's just the power supply. So we'll open up the side. All right, and this looks like it's the power cord. So let's take it out. That's exactly what it is. So this is our power brick. And here's the power cord that comes with the power brick. Here we have our ethernet cable. It's probably about, I don't know, four or five feet. And this looks like they put on some high end ends onto this ethernet cable. And I mentioned I didn't know what the blue port was on the back of the router right there. But that blue port, that will be your internet connection. So your ISP will be plugged into the blue port. Now that we've done unboxing the ASUS router, let's go ahead, go back to the computer and look at some of the specs. Now that we've seen what's in the box, let's go over some of the specs. 
So the network standard for the GT-AX11000 is Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax. On the home page of this router, it says the world's first 10 gigabit Wi-Fi router. So if we look at the data rates for the 2.4 gigahertz band, if we look at the channel width, it would be our 20 and our 40 channel width. And that would have up to 1,148 megabits per second. If we look at the 5G-1 hertz band with the 4x4, and then the channel widths of 20, 40, 80, and 160 megahertz, we have up to 4,804 megabits per second. And the same for the 5G-2 hertz. So this is a combined 10 gigabit Wi-Fi rate. We have eight external antennas. In the transmit and receive, we have 2.4, 5-1, and then the 5-2 at the 4x4. It has a 1.8 gigahertz quad-core processor and 256 NAND flash and 1 gigabit DDR3 SD RAM. The operating frequency is a tri-band Wi-Fi. And the ports that we have on this router it is an RJ45 for gigabit base T WAN port times one, and then we have four LAN ports that are one gigabit. We have one multi-gigabit port at 2.5 gigs or one gigabit per second. We have a WPS button that makes it easy for us to be able to connect devices without really needing the password. For game, we have game boost acceleration. We have game radar, WTF fast, and then the open NAT game profile. So if you select to open ports, you just need to select the game and it should open your NAT and do the port forwarding. It is support for Alexa, and we also have parental controls. There's other features for traffic control. We have adaptive QoS, bandwidth monitor, bandwidth limiter, and so on. We have a few different encryption types. We could have an open system, WPA, WPA personal, WPA, WPA2 enterprise. It supports a guest network, and our guest encryptions are open system, WPA, WPA2 personal. For our WAN internet connection types, we could, it supports PPPoE, PPPTP, L2TP, automatic IP, which is your DHCP, and a static IP address. And it does support dual WAN. And we could also have WAN aggregation. On the LAN side of things, it supports Let's Encrypt, a DHCP server, IGMP snooping, IPTV, uh, LAN link aggregation, manual assign IP addresses, this router also supports a variety of different VPNs, so we could be a VPN client with an L2TP, a VPN client with OpenVPN, a VPN client with PPPTP, a VPN server with IPsec, a VPN server with OpenVPN, a VPN server with PPPTP, and a VPN Fusion. Now I'm going to get this thing plugged in, plug my computer into it, and then get into the basic setup. Now the router is connected to power. I have my ISP connection going into the WAN port and I also have a LAN cable going from this computer to the back of the router. So we need to figure out what the IP address is of the router. So if we open up a command prompt and then we type in IP config and then we need to find the ethernet adapter that's connecting. So we'll scroll up and we can see here that the default gateway is 192.168.50.1 which is the ASUS router interface. So we'll go to a Chrome tab and then type that in, 192.168.50.1. And this says, welcome to GT-AX11000, create a new network or advanced settings. We're gonna click on advanced settings and see what's in that. So the first setting is AI mesh, and this combines more than one ASUS router to form an AI mesh system, providing whole home coverage and centralized management, we're not gonna do that as I only have the one. The next one is the GT-AX11000 supports several operating modes to meet different requirements. Please select the mode that matches your situation. So we'll click on choose operation mode. And here we have a few choices. It could be a wireless router mode, which is the default, repeater mode, access point mode, media bridge and AI mesh. We're gonna choose wireless router mode. On the next page, it's asking us our WAN connection type. I plugged into the 2.5 gig ethernet. Now it's asking us if our internet connection requires a username and password. This would be used for PPPoE and mine doesn't, so I'll press no. 
Now it's gonna ask us what our internet connection type is. Most people will just be on DHCP and you'll wanna to go to automatic IP. I have a static IP, so we'll be clicking that. If you have a static IP address, you're gonna to need to fill in the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, and your DNS. I'm gonna do that and then press next. Here is where we're gonna set up our wireless network. So we have our 2.4 gigahertz network and we have the password. We also have the five gigahertz dash one and the five gigahertz dash two. It's saying separate the 2.4 and the five. I don't wanna separate it. I wanna have it all as one. So I'm gonna uncheck this. Now that's gonna combine both of my networks. And when I'm further away from the router, I should connect to the 2.4. And when I'm closer, I should connect to the five. So we're gonna give it a network name, our SSID, and I'm gonna call it ASUS test. We're gonna put in a password of test1234, and then we're gonna press apply. Now it's saying that it's 802.11ax ready. The latest 802.ax Wi-Fi technology is now ready. 802.ax routers improve both your Wi-Fi capacity and efficiency and provide ultra fast throughput. It does tell you here that some wireless adapters may have connectivity issues to 802.11ax. And if you're experiencing any issues to go to any one of these sites, I'm gonna press next. On this page, it's the boost key setting. So bind one of the following functions to your boost key. When the boost key function has been activated, the boost keys LED will turn on. So the settings that we have are the Aurora RGB, which is Aurora sync control is used to get Aurora control from other ROG devices. If disabled, it will be customized Aurora RGB. We also have enable game boost. Game boost analyzes network traffic and prioritizes game packets, giving games a second level of acceleration for best possible performance. So if you're using this to game, this would be the one you would wanna pick. I'm gonna select the Aurora RGB and then we'll press next. Now we have to put in a username and password that will be used to log into this router. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and press next. After we added our username and password, it rebooted the ASUS router and it's bringing us back to the management page. I'm gonna go ahead and type in my username and then we're gonna type in the password to log in. Now we're at the GTX-AX1100 dashboard and there is a lot of things going on here. You could see your WAN IP if you're using a static IP. We could see the different wireless states and we could see the mode that we're running. We could also see how many clients are on here. Down below, we could see the current network traffic for our receive and our transmission. We could see our network ping and right now my average is 36.4 milliseconds and then we could see the ping deviation. We could see the game radar and we could also change the RGB on the ASUS router so we could put it on any color we want. If we click on the wireless tab, this will show us our SSID, which is ASUS test. We can see that the wireless mode is auto. 802.11a6 Wi-Fi mode is enabled. We can see our authentication, which is WPA2 personal. We can see the encryption, which is AES. And then we could also see the password. Down below at the channel bands, we could change the channel bandwidth. So on the 2.4 gigahertz, it's using the 20 slash 40, but we could hard code this if you want to 20 or 40. Same with the five gigahertz dash one and two. We could enable the 160 megahertz channels if we'd like. I'm gonna leave everything at default. If we wanna change the subnet that our clients are getting within our wireless network or our LAN network, we would click on LAN. And by default, it's giving us the 192.168.50 network slash 24, which will give you 254 working hosts. You could change this to be whatever you want and then apply. If you do change this LAN IP, you're gonna to wanna to change the DHCP server as well. And we can see that the DHCP server is enabled and the IP starting pool is 192.168.50.2 and the ending as 50.254. And it shows the least time of 86,400 seconds, which is a day. There's a lot to this router. As you guys can see on the left-hand side, there is a lot of tabs. I just wanted to go through this video with the basic setup. Now we're gonna do a Wi-Fi speed test as well as an iPerf test. Now you can see my phone on screen and I'm using an iPhone, which has a Wi-Fi 6 chipset built into it. I'm gonna press go and we'll see what speeds we're getting. 
All right, so that's pretty impressive. We're getting 613 megabits per second download and 54 upload. I pay for a gigabit connection download and about 50 upload. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do an iPerf test. Now this computer is running as an iPerf server. We're pointing towards it at 192.168.50.229. We're gonna test the download first, then we'll test the upload with five streams and the test duration will be 30 seconds. I'll press start. And our average iPerf download was 713 megabits per second. Let's test the upload. And our average iPerf upload was 563 megabits per second. So I'm pretty impressed with this router by the speeds that it's giving and the iPerf test. If there's anything you would like to see, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to add it into a video. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.